Okay, y'all. Um, got my brother back in the house. I had an opportunity to sit with this brother not too long ago, and I enjoyed it. I knew we had to do it one more time, one more again, as they say. Please welcome St. Louis own my brother Murphy Lee. Murph, what up, kid? What up, big bro? Top of top of the day. How you doing? Top of the day to you. Yo, I'm gonna tell you, it's hot out here. How, how's it where you at? I'm outside now. I'm out in the gazebo now. It's hot, but it ain't, you know, Atlanta is man manageable. Got you. I, I, I told you, like, real talk, you got a better backdrop than I got. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. You know, since 2020, we've been zoomed out. I done found a million backdrops and all types. <laughs> <laughs> That's real talk. I mean, it's crazy how this world changed, but like, like you said, since 2020, like, like we've been zoomed out and, and it's just showing that the world can survive virtually. Yeah, I like it though. I like it this way. It ain't, it ain't a bad thing. Nah, I, I, I'm with you 100%. I really am. And it give a chance to do stuff like this. Once once upon a time, you had to wait for folks like you to be in, in your city or, um, you know, yeah. come up to the studio, find time in your day. But like you said, you, you in a gazebo right now, handling business. Yeah, but what's called, um, you know, all the media used to have to go to one state, one city to talk to the person at one time and all that. Now you can just, you know, I love it. I love it. I love it. It get more yeah. jobs, more more opportunities, more everything. You you remember them days like like you literally had to wait yeah. into everybody. I mean, they, they still do it. I think BET still do it at the BET. Now you, should, you should do press conferences or somehow somewhere where you invite everybody in one place. That's dope, too. But. Yeah, you used to have to do it for the albums. I mean, a million people, you used to have to do a million interviews answering the same question. Nobody was different. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't wait to get to somebody different interview because they, they're not going to ask the same question that you just said 29 times. You had to keep repeating, you know what I'm saying? So. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't even expect for the, for the interview to go in this direction, but let's go for a second. Hey, a lot of us, we're on the other side. Oh, you know, you're the artist. People don't realize y'all be sitting there answering the same questions a thousand times. Do y'all go into interview? Is matter of fact, I'm gonna ask you a two part question. Do y'all go into interviews dreading it? And number two, is that the reason so many artists be like, "Yo, I don't even do interviews." Like, like it, it, it take a special person, a special moment in my career for me to even want to do an interview. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's two parts to that. I think, let me get the one part that I remember immediately from your question is that half of them don't do interviews because they, uh, half of them don't, they got half the brain. It's a lot of them can't talk, can't, a lot of strict series. Like a lot of them don't, don't do well with questions, people questioning them, you know what I'm saying? And, and they got to an answer. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them still with people who do wrong. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of questions be getting asked and they get into situations that they're not supposed to be in because they done said the wrong thing on accident. Uh, but it's really, it's really the person. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I'm prepared for that because I love it. I like that part of school. I like that part of, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I can, I like debating and and talking back and forth with with the with the it's and I like knowledge. You know what I'm saying? And I like the wisdom and the understanding of all of that. So. I think that that plays a part when people want to be in the thing. But a lot of people just realize that sometimes the media get nosy and it'd be like, it'd be the same thing. Like you asking for the same thing. You're not asking because you really care. You know what I'm saying? You ask because it's that's what's up. That's what you got to ask. It's your job too. You know what I'm saying? You're like, I got to ask these questions. So you ask them anyway when in reality, man, you don't ask no grown man that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what it is when it's when it's not right. So a lot of them just, just steer from it because they know for a fact, true. It can lead to some trouble or I'm going to say the wrong thing and then the, the internet going to kill me. You know what I'm saying? They be asking me to rap. I can't rap that well. And I get embarrassed now. <laughs> my career going backwards. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot to that, man. And the interviews can do it. So I like how I like how how the, the, the big artists choose their ones that they want to do. You know what I'm saying? I think that's that's that reminds me of how all the big artists used to come out every three years, every two years. You know what I'm saying? They ain't just force it, force it, force it. They actually made you miss them. They actually had something to say. You know what I'm saying? How Jay-Z hit, hit the breakfast club sometimes. I think that's super dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
We only seen him once or twice on, you know what I'm saying? He don't go every time he drop an album, he go and and we appreciate it when we see them. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that's a big part with the big artists, but all these other young little artists will be saying, no, they ain't tripping. You better get your media game up and get in every podcast and in front of everybody you can because you're not them. Yo, you 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 know you dropped a mouthful right there. Like right. you dropped a lot in, in, in a few minutes, and I just want to dissect it. First and foremost, uh, you know, artists like Jay-Z, they really do make you miss them because they don't do media often. But they're so well trained in media. Now, granted, Jay been doing this. Jay, Jay, Jay been on the scene since 95, 96. I think his first album came out in 96. So he got a real 30 years of the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, how not to fall into the pitfalls with the media, all that. But what, why is it so hard for, for artists to just be like, you know what? I got no comment on that. Or you know what? I wasn't there, so I, I can't really speak on to something that just like you wasn't there, I wasn't there. It seemed like it's so difficult for artists to understand no matter how difficult or intrusive the question might be, nobody can do anything with it if you don't answer it. And, and it's okay to just be like, yo, you know what? I really don't know. Next question. If, I, that's, that's super facts. But you get in the moment, you forget the camera on, you forget you roll, it's time you get comfortable. Uh, you might be high drunk. You might be, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, can, it, can, it can get there. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real, you think you're doing somebody a favor. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all got to look at it like that, too, because it's like, I don't want to not answer a question because you I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? You asked me to be on her press. I'm not going to not answer the questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to try to answer it to the best I can. But you're right. Like, you should should be quiet if you don't know what you're talking about. Like, like even the chinky thing that y'all done came back with or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in there. I don't, I wasn't there or what's called. I said it 20 times. I wasn't there. And that was just my perspective of what y'all was saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't there. I wasn't, I don't know. You got to ask Chingy or Ali. But I still, I still answered it a little bit though. Still, I still gave you my side of the story or whatever I heard. But I'm really defending my big brother saying his chain got took. I'm like, he didn't get it took. That's my whole thing. My whole, I didn't even go to the question yet. I still was on uh you feel me what i'm saying like i, I didn't even go to the question i was like my brother chain and get i was more in the defensive my brother chain and get snatched that was somebody who had the chain wasn't supposed to have it and all that you know what i'm saying like and that's where i was at and it made me say something about the story when i wasn't there and i didn't care you know what i'm saying like i don't give a damn so it, it's 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 that easy to you know what i'm saying to fall into a question because like you said we like I, we we there for y'all you know what i'm saying like that's how we looking at it like if i did take my time out to come out to do this interview. I said, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna answer the questions, you know what I'm saying? Like I can, as best as I can, you know what I'm saying? So I think we just, like I said, we get we get zoned out and follow into it, fall into some of that stuff. But you if know, you're not supposed to answer, you're not supposed to answer, especially the illegal stuff. If you're not supposed to answer, you're not supposed to, supposed to answer. And, and and that's 100% facts. Um, That's a whole different, like, like bag of worms right there. We ain't even gotta go, like if you doing something, <laughs> You ain't supposed to be talking about it, especially <laughs> if 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 it's still in what 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 is it the the statute of limitations? Like damn, oh, um, man. I don't, I, man. We can go back and get old records now, like if on old writings from the sixties now. So I don't put no statue on nothing. I don't trust no <laughs> law. They could change it yesterday. You wouldn't even know the law got changed because we ain't into it like that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't say I don't want to talk about nothing illegal. I don't care right. what happened. You know what I'm saying? No, Stuff no, shit you. Little, it's different. You know what I'm saying? If I did something when I was younger and it was little and I was just showing young folks, yo, it's dumb. I did this stupid stuff. Blase, blase. That keep it pushing. But we get too deep. I don't like that. You know, we we, we going to go down this road because I think it, it, it's a dope conversation to have because I don't like right now, especially within the rap community, like, damn, like, like the feds is on everybody's social media. They literally are in the office with their feet up somewhere eating donuts. No, nah, it's and a nice team being It got to be a nice team being paid to watch complete. I mean, we have if we had hip hop police, you definitely know since social media that we got people that just sit there watching our watching our you know stuff, especially if you look like you into that type of stuff. And especially if you're young, 
Cause I need y'all young and in jail. That way I can lead the world to get y'all in jail. I need I need the world in jail. I don't need just the rappers in jail. I don't care about you one or two rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if I get y'all, it leads to all them other cats thinking they somebody or this and that. So it makes it, it makes my job easier. You know what I'm saying? Cause y'all falling down the line or whatever them young rappers doing. So you know, I know if I get him, y'all gonna fall out into the trap, think jail cool the whole night. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent right. Like we live in a, a a a social media world that has just like things that that you wouldn't even dream could happen is not only happening, but it's happening on social media and it's happening on live where where, where people are literally so addicted to likes and they're so addicted to views and they're so addicted to them heart emojis and 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 thumbs up and all of that that they're literally going on doing crimes and filming themselves doing crimes in real time like the, the cops don't even have to work no more like it's it's the most bananas thing on the planet but to your point the kids they follow folks like yourself who are the rappers who 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 are the people who they look up to. And when you got a lot of these, uh, just cause just cause you're making a lot of money doesn't mean you're mature. Just cause you're making a lot of money don't mean that you got both feet out the hood. So a lot of the kids is looking at some of these artists who, who are still one foot in the hood, one foot not in the hood. And even if they're not in the hood, they want to still, uh, put themselves out there and present themselves like, yo, I'm, 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 about my business and I'm thorough and they're just doing crazy stuff on the gram, which, which is telling kids, yo, I might as well go ahead and do that too. And meanwhile, feds are sitting at home, sitting in the office with their feet up and, and, and literally driving up, catching them in the act. And I just never even seen nothing like this or thought I'd see nothing like this in my lifetime. It's crazy. Oh, it's always been crazy. It's always been stuff. Everything that's been going on, been going on. It's just a little bigger gun. So now, you know what I'm saying? But it's been going on. It's just like you just said, we got social media now. You know what I'm saying? So we, they literally, you can see it. And like I said, just like an interview, you don't even realize you, you telling on yourself. You don't even realize you. you but they do. But they now, do. Now they, they think, they think nobody care about them because they small time. You feel what I'm saying? So they like, they're not realizing, but once you press play or record or whatever it is, it's there. Now somebody gonna grab it and now it's a thing. You know what I'm saying? And you you don't win thing, you ain't try to go viral, but you knew what you was doing when you recorded, because you be talking to your little friends. That's your see, it's almost like this. We went outside to play, right? When we was young, our kids are now on the game and their friends are online. You feel what I'm saying? So they build certain communities, just like a gang almost. So that's what these kids are doing. So when you see somebody filming themselves, beating somebody up and taking his chain real quick and putting his chain on, he is in love with his little 20 followers. And he think he just talking to them. He's not, yeah, we think we we think these kids equipped. I got to tell my seven-year-old 29 times the same thing that I told him for the past three or four years. Every day, I got to tell you this, a reminder every day until you get 10, 12 till you remember. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you don't remember yet. These kids are living childhoods like that. They don't remember discipline, different things to remember that I'm not supposed to do this. They're not even thinking like that. He thinking he's showing off. You feel me? It's mm -hmm. no difference from us liking uh, uh, Scarface and all the movies and stuff like that being hard, right? I was an A student. But that dude who used to cuss out the teacher, not do his work sometimes, uh, beat up everybody, fight with some people, gang bang, sell a little drugs on the side the whole night. I was infatuated a little bit, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? To where I talk, when I'm around him, I talk a little head, I talk a little, little harder, you know what I'm saying? Because I know what I do when I go back home. I know how I am there, but it's school, it's school. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. But when I go back home, I'm doing the wildest stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can relate to him, I can talk to him and boom, but a lot of people want to live that life. And it's the same thing. It's like you got suburban kids wanting to just that. It's no different from a girl liking the gangster. She likes a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? The dude's the same way. We we get infatuated a little bit with the gang member. Like, man, you don't do it. But 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can get laid down that road just because of the infatuation, bro. And that's what you got. That's what you're seeing. You're just seeing, I can't even call it followers no more. I just call it the it fact, like the, the thing to do. It's almost the cool. The cool, bad is cool. When it used to be called bad, he used to just be like, boy, bad. Like, that's bad. He bad. We all seen him in class. We all knew who it was. All that in the neighborhoods. We know who the bad ones are. But now that we got social media, you got the cool, the being bad is cool. And nah, big, it really big, is. It really yeah. is. And that, and that's well said. You know, I, I, I just pray, especially being an OG at this point in my life. Uh, like, like when we was coming up, you was taught do your dirt, but do it on the low. I, I just never thought I'd live to see a world where it, 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 it's cool to do your dirt and be bad in public like that, like to, for the whole world to see. And especially when, when once that thing is uploaded, once you hit record, it's there forever. It's like, it literally is there forever. And, you know, maybe it's just immaturity. Maybe to, to your point, it's the cool factor. But I just hope like, like a lot of these young brothers and young sisters, because they so out of control right now. I hope they understand that this is going to follow you forever. It's going to be a day that you grow out of this. And, and, and you're going to want to go for a job, but this is still there. It's going to be a day that you're going to want to clean up your act, but this is still there. So I don't know. It's just a weird let me, world. Let, can, I put, can I put some good vibes on you, kid? Please. What if it's not real? What if it's, what if it's the same thing? What if it's the same stats that says black on black crime? Or what if it's the same stats that you wake up in your city, watch the news, and you're going to see, anytime you see black, you're going to see what you see, right? Uh -huh. That's a pro program, right? Yes, sir. Who owns the social media? Mm. Why wouldn't I show you that on your timeline? What if it's not that many? It's not that many, bro. We can make one look like 5,000. We can make one person look like it's ruining the black community. One person can be like, man, you making it bad for us. <laughs> or if one person do a movie and it look coonish or something, you're like, man, he making it bad for all black people. No, he's not. He making it bad for himself. Like once we keep putting these stats on us and we're part of it. So what about that? Like, what if what if that's what's going on? Why are we seeing that? Why are you seeing that fight on social media? Why you keep seeing that same thing? And why when you see it once, you end up seeing it 20 times after that? And on the person who in your room, he see it on their phone too. It's all on their timeline now. Like it's it's fine to you, but I bet you old old boy, the uh, the white man is 37 who be watching his timeline. I bet you he don't even see it. It don't even come across. Why do you think they ask you your color? Your, you know what I'm saying? Your ethnicity and all that on your on your when you sign up for these social sites and age and all that. They know what to put on your timeline, my brother. Like we could we can't control that. You can't control the timeline. You gonna see it or skip it, whatever. You ain't gotta like or like it or share or 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 comment. But I, I bet you I get it to your timeline if I need it to your timeline. Damn, that's intelligent and deep. Did, did you just think about that on the spot, or is this something that you just like like felt for a minute? I mean, it's it's in your brain, but I I definitely on the spot. I definitely just just thought about it when you said that. I'm like, it's another side to that. Can't be no different from the news. It's the new news. If we the new news. We ain't doing nothing but helping them spread it. We don't even watch channel. We don't even watch the news in the morning. Regular people don't watch the news. We be at work or we leaving. We don't get a chance to watch no news or read no newspaper. So what's the new news? What's the new newspaper? I, I'm going to get you. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find some negativity you put in your head. Where you at? <laughs> oh, you on your phone? Okay, I got you. Put it on social. Nah, it's crazy. Because what you're talking about is, is propaganda. It's negative propaganda. This program, yeah. I never ever looked at it from that perspective. Like, yo, maybe it, it, it's intentionally being fed to us. It gotta be times over, but it's just a small part of the population. But it because it comes super across, small part. It it, it super, feels I mean, like this super small. I'm talking about we're nothing but 14 to 19 percent of the nation. Correct. Super small, fam. You feel what I'm saying? So just think about what they're doing, man. 
all of that. I watch I watch all that stuff when they be trying to put that on us. You can't put that on us. Don't put that on us because it's more poor white people than blacks. So stop. Don't put that on us. Don't make it seem like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, we doing a great, we doing great. Man. Black people are doing well. You have a nice chair behind you, bro. I'm sorry. We okay. But they gonna make it look super, it's no worse than any other countries, any other, everybody doing bad, bro. It's people oh, doing you, bad kid. at all times. Like, don't make it look like, don't make it look like it's just us. We out there bad. No, we're not. We're actually doing the best we ever did in life. You feel what I'm saying? I'm talking about the best we ever been. Like college rates, uh, two pair of homes, um, good living, households, two jobs. Doom, doom. You know what I'm saying? Like we living, we really living. But they gonna show you and make you try to keep you in your place to let you know you still doing bad. You know what I'm saying? If you don't bring your people up, you really gonna be doing bad. <laughs> 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 they gonna keep us in that realm of life, you know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about no no race or nothing. I'm talking about whoever want to keep you poor, you know what I'm saying? They going that's who's in charge of the media. It's not no ain't no race thing in the media. It's poor and rich. Poor and rich. Yo, this is such a dope conversation and such dope perspective from from your point of view. I love like real talk and it, and it, and it always come down to media because you're going to believe what you see. And if you see the same image a thousand times over, you're going to believe that. It don't matter if it's a very, very small percentage of the overall piece of pie. It's just, I saw it a thousand times. That that must mean that it's a part of a larger issue. Damn, yeah. that, that's well said on your part, kid. Um, I want to touch on... Distractions, just distractions. I know to distract you well from your, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want to touch on something that um you said earlier, and, and, and you kind of tipped old into it, but I want to bring it to light. Um, after I sat with you, I sat with Chingy. And Chingy was was and, and I and I guess he's speaking his truth. And I, he was he was talking about what you alluded to in terms of of um, your brother's chain getting snatched, and you said what I thought was 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 a fair overview of it. I did, and I told Chingy that in real time. I'm like, yo, you know, it's not like Murph said anything with malicious intent or or anything with with malice or badness in his heart. When, when, when you saw his commentary, was you caught off guard or are you just at a point like this uh, is he just part of the game? No, no. He said he came to us about it when the first in the, in the, in the, when my interview dropped. Oh, he, he came offline. Yeah, he asked about it. He didn't come to me, but he asked about it like Ali or somebody. <clears throat> but no, he just he just I mean, when you hear your name in an interview, bro you gonna get on defense from the jump. You know what I'm saying? So I understand it. I understand where he coming from. I understand how he said one false truth can change my life. So I, I got to confront it. I understand where you're going with that in life. That's dope. But the thing is, you didn't hear my interview. I've never in life said y'all was trying to be like us. Why would I say that? I said the whole world was dressing like us. You had no choice. The same box that you brought that was brought the vocal box. I said y'all was in the box. I said it was, I said all the clothes was getting brought to them. So they was gonna wear them regardless. You know what I'm saying? So it, it just was like, he was trying to confront stuff that was said, but in actuality, what was said wasn't said. I didn't even, I didn't even go there. I would never knock what you're doing. I never said you lived with Ali. I didn't say that. I said, y'all was over there doing the studio. That's what it was. You was there. I didn't even bring that up. You know what I'm saying? But just a lot of stuff that he brought up. I just literally know that he didn't really hear what I was saying. He just heard his name and was like, let me check, that ain't the real story. You know what I'm saying? Cause I don't, the stories that I didn't know, I said, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really know. All I do know is that were my people and the people who took it, I, he can know them. That don't mean that was the part of that, what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, they ain't never been on your bus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He wasn't with you. It was just somebody in the neighborhood, regardless of what's going on. But I don't know, man, a lot of people could be mad at you for anything you say. So I don't really, I really don't, don't care about that part of it. I just want you to know that I he he know this. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't care as much as people think to be 
you know what I'm saying? Saying false anything. I, I, I really don't give a damn. When I don't know, I don't know. I say I don't know. I say this is my perspective, but I don't know. You got to ask people who really was part of it. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I was young, outside looking in, and I was focused on, on women and money and, and getting my life together. I didn't care about nothing else. You know, um, he, he, even when I sat with him, because uh, he hit me offline, uh, mm -hmm. you know, before we did the interview. And I made it clear then, like, yo, I, I'm, I sat with him. So, so I know when an interviewer, somebody like myself is trying to bait somebody. Mm -hmm. I also know when when the interviewee is trying to say something with malice or they're trying to say something to, to take a jab or a poke or hurt somebody. And mm -hmm. I told him neither one was done. It, it was questions asked, which you have to ask because, because it's factual. Um, but I'm like, yo, I, I, I sat with Murph and I didn't get anything that that would remotely say he was trying to bend the truth or give a half truth actually he went so far as to say some of the stuff i don't know because i wasn't there but i also the more I sat with chingy i understood why it was so important why it is so important for him to set anything straight right out the gate um because he he was a victim of somebody who put out a vicious lie on him and it hurt his career it hurt him so, so mm. I understood, but it, this was one of them cases, and 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 I think that um, even with his with his response, he said it from a place of I'm really just trying to to yeah. set the straight. I'm not trying yeah. to hurt nobody. I don't have no beef with Murph. I, I'm just trying to say this is what the real truth from he my think, perspective yeah. is. I just want, he, he did, he did. And that's what I, you know, I, you know, that's why I'm cool with all the shits, man. I feel this is where it's at. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it's, that's where life is at. Life ain't call a person to see what's really going on. Life is go set it straight wherever it is. If it happened on Vlad, I need to go on Vlad and tell everybody it didn't happen like this or whatever. And I'm cool with that, man. It ain't, it ain't nothing, nothing, period. You know what I'm saying? But I hope he like actually listened to what I was saying. You know what I'm saying? And then also, he got to realize too, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I'm talking through you to him. People don't care, man. They ain't worried about what we was talking about, man. Like <laughs> you, you made that a big deal in your life. That ain't, man, it, and it probably ain't a big deal. I ain't mean it like that, but nobody care about the, what I, what Mer, Lil Murph said. I didn't say nothing wrong or false. Nobody really cared. But like I said, when your name get brought up in something, you know what I'm saying? I, I felt it when you asked the question. I was like, oh shit, we finna get into the to somebody else talking about other people. Out I, I click, you know what I'm saying? And when it get and when your name get called, you hear what you hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you hear, uh, I'm telling them how people felt, like how how PR works. Not how, not how you work, Ching. You you gonna work with everybody wear. You know what I'm saying? Do rags in the 90s. No, stop. Nobody ever matched they do rag with their outfit ever on earth and put headbands around them like we did that. And what people be realize need to realize we did that. It wasn't even a St. Louis thing. This was a lunatic thing. You feel what I'm saying? Lunatic brought this in. Everybody done it on earth. All of that. I, I don't want to get into the many trendsetters as we did, but we did that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was wearing, everybody was wearing black and white, white t-shirts, black and white, period. We was the bright what we doing mixing up we did that so everybody it became a trend a sign a dreads became a trend it didn't become a um it wasn't no because everybody else was doing it on earth you know what i'm saying no never that you know what i'm saying matter of fact if we artists don't do with nobody everybody else doing on earth we gotta be different you feel what i'm yeah. saying like so think like that like if we talking let's change our thoughts like well why would you want to wear that like everybody else wearing? because mm -hmm. <laughs> i would as an artist i'm not gonna do that you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna be murph and that's what we supposed to do period man so i don't want to get into that all that but yeah man we should just listen to each other and i definitely understand why he got on defense about it you know what i'm saying so i don't knock him at all that's brother he broke for life man i don't care about none of that stuff I, I have no feelings in none of that stuff you know i care about all of us as artists and i think that to advance we got to do more do more um shutting up that's all i'm gonna shut up more you know because it started with me and start well it started with him because he brought the he answered the question on his first interview that made you even bring it up to me you know what i'm saying because we was involved in it 
but we just need to shut up more then don't talk about it at all you know what i'm saying like because it's still it's definitely more story more truth in it than both of us talking about it's deeper than that you on a video said you doing stuff you don't know what happened behind the scenes you know what i'm saying you can't do nothing but go off what people tell you so it's more to all of that you know so i don't i don't if i don't know i'm gonna shut up and that's why i'm learning myself so that was a learning experience for old murph shut the fuck up if it's not about murph or, or what's mine and my people you know what i'm saying Okay, switch topics with me for a second. You you mentioned Ali earlier in the conversation, and I had a chance to look at a, a interview that he did. And in one part, I was super inspired. In another part, you know, my heart kind of went out, you know, to him. I I guess I didn't realize the, to the magnitude of that he played in putting together the Saint Lunatics and the success of you guys and Nelly. This guy really was like the RZA, like what RZA was to the Wu-Tang, he was to the Saint Lunatics, correct? Uh, yeah, now that I watched the movie, exactly. Exactly, I think he had that much care in it to form something to, That he saw the future of, you know what I'm saying? Because it ain't like we, he knew from the jump that, oh, he was the tightest, he the tight. It ain't like he went and grabbed the tightest people on earth. You know what I'm saying? He grabbed his best friend's nephews who was right there. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, and and not only that, that we rapped, but it was just that fact. You know what I'm saying? And actually, we didn't rap rap before we decided to be a rap group. We didn't rap that much. It wasn't like it was a life of rapping. It was a life of getting girls and, you know what I'm saying, doing wrong a little bit, going to school before that. It wasn't that. It was sports. It wasn't everyday rapping. And then like, oh, man, we tight. We should form a group. It wasn't like that. It was like he came back from wherever he was at, and he wanted to start some stuff. And they all did. Three more heads. It's Tony Davis. That's the man, this is the management group. Tony, three called them three more heads. Tony Davis, Keith Brent, and Ali Jones. And them three wanted to start something. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a company called Bulletproof Records on the other side of town that was um had their own record label doing their thing and it, it motivated them to want to do something in that nature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when when I sat down and I watched his interview, he was saying how. I think he relocated to Atlanta early in the nineties and he was, nah, he, he, he went to school. He went to Clark. Oh, Ali went to Clark. Yeah. He went to Clark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Okay. I think it's Clark. Yeah. He went to, is it Clark? I think it's Clark. Yeah. He went, cause he hooped. Clark. Ali hooped. Ali was a, one of the top hoopers in St. Louis. So he okay. went, he, he went on, he went to, school to hoop i don't think he ended up hooping but he he went to school to you know because he was in that world okay make okay it make perfect sense now and then See, he got into to the mute he got into the music heavy when he moved here saw the whole freak nick scene the whole scene and made him be like oh no this is what we need to do we can do it we definitely can do this in the loop and, and that's what he was saying. He was like, yo, at that time he was watching Jermaine Dupree and um, how he had um, Chris Cross. Everybody was jumping. He was talking about how he had, um, you know, just saw what Outkast was doing. But he was like, their success, because if you remember back in them days, New York owned it. And then LA came and they put their twist and they was doing their thing. And he was like, yo, the reason that Atlanta was able to break out and become the powerhouse that it's become is because they really owned Atlanta swag. They had low, they owned Atlanta style. They, they wasn't trying to emulate anybody else. They was from the South. They was using their lingo, their slang, the way that they move, and they was putting it out there loud and proud. And he was like, yo, when I went back to St. Louis, I was like, yo, we could just recreate the same thing that they got going on in Atlanta, but for the Midwest. We 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 got our own slang. We move a certain way. So he was like, yo, we immediately just started to look to put together a group. And, you know, he just, to your point, yo, I just called on my friends and, and 
here's one thing that really stuck out. He was like, yo, I didn't, I didn't want nobody talking about gangbanging, nobody cussing, nobody portraying negative images. And he was like, a lot of people just fell off. And the five that stayed became the St. Lunatics. Is that the way you remember it? Yeah, there was a lot of us in there. It was at least about nine to 10 people trying to rap. And it ended up being, by the end of the night, it ended up being five. And that was skill. That was just writing wise, like putting something on paper wise. And then the next step was, cause it really was like six of us or something like that. But the next step was to um, try to cut out certain words, try to cut out certain things. Like, especially if you was doing it right now, you know what I'm saying? So if you selling dope right now, try not to talk about selling dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not sell dope. Or if we getting girls, why are we talking about killing and dealing? when we some girl getters or we partiers or we, um, you know what I'm saying? Or if we dope dealers, why aren't we just talking about selling dope instead of talking about other things? You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, talk about it. Let's, let's keep it a honey. And let, and uh, you know what I'm saying? We used to pat our pockets and all that. Like, where them guns that y'all be talking about in them raps? Because you get the name and all type of gun because you hear Spice One or you hear other root rappers and groups and you think that's how it's supposed to be. But in actuality, um, Try to stay in your lane, lane somehow, somehow, some way. You know, find you a lane. So let me ask you, I know he's a little older than everybody in the group. Was he just like that wise older brother, OG, from the crew? Because most now, he just knew how to do it. Say that again? He just knew how to do it. Like, he knew what he was doing because he can, he can rap rap. Ali Cole. I don't want to hear all this. They be saying all this the best out the group shit. You know what I'm saying? But Ali Cole, like Cole Cole, he just older now. You know what I'm saying? He cold though, like cold. Any any ram of you, how you want it? What you want? You want a party song? What any ram of what you want? He cold. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking about like lyricist wise, like top five on earth. He cold cold with words. You know what I'm saying? He literally can hold back on things to make it fit a song. You know what I'm saying? He know what he's doing. But if you go back and listen to everything, you can hear him now as a grown person. Like, he said, Dad, that's what that meant? You know what I'm saying? Like, I go back right now to the Lunatic album, Free City, and listen to it and be like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what that meant. I didn't even know what that meant at 20. I don't <laughs> know what that You know what I'm saying? Like, now I see clearly. And that's what we was talking to. Our, our demographic was high schoolers and college students and people in their 20s, you know what I'm saying? So, and he talking for 40-year-olds, but he 28, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't like he he 40, he 28 with just mature thoughts and just a mind, man, he got a big ass head, man. He, he <laughs> your, it's your Gotti and Ali, man. Both of them is the same humans on earth. Both of them could do that. He could do, he could be doing with your, he can be running a label. Right now, one of them labels, universe, somebody need to, they they missing out. Yeah, you know because for him to do that at such a, a young age and Man. really, because I you know where I was gonna go with it, most people they 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 feel we gotta come into the game and we gotta talk about guns, we gotta talk about the streets, we gotta quote unquote keep it real. So for him to have the presence of mind to be like nah, like that ain't the way we need to break into this game. Like, it, even if we doing it out here, it's still another way to do it and we can reach a bigger audience. I, I th That's, you know, he, I understand. Majority. It really is. Like, he an artist. What do you want out of this business? It's all it's about. This is what you want out of it. Do you want to do clubs for the rest of your life? You want to do arenas? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Do you just want to sell for your fans at the crib? How do you want to do it? Because you can do it. You know what I'm saying? But content is everything. So what you talking about gonna get you to the levels that you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just not being able to do arenas off of uh, shooting people and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's who. <laughs> believe, that started with probably who? I don't know. I guess Jesus and Rick Ross probably the first ones to be able to do top arenas like that. You know what I'm saying? NWA, of course, but like you said, NWA said both sides of it. They was explaining the hood and letting you know how it was in LA. They wasn't necessarily always saying, I'm gonna shoot you in the head, mother. 
They didn't really go there. They was telling stories. The boys in the hood was always hard. Ice Cube was a storyteller. You know what I'm saying? He wrote them lyrics. So we got to see the difference between saying I did something and saying this is what's going on. See, hip hop started with this is what's going on. And the only thing I did was kill you in this rap. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I killed you with these bars. Now it's saying, now it's like, this is what I did last night. This is what I did. And this is how we do it. And no, bro, you snitched on your whole click that fast. Like, stop it. Don't say uh, this. Uh, I, don't do that. <laughs> say this is what's going on in your neighborhood <laughs> or, your, or your West Coast. Otherwise, them boys coming after you. Because nah, everybody ain't rapping. Arab, some people are literally still in this thing and they just trying to get out or they trying to be around you to get out. But they still in it. And you talking about it. And now I'm looking at all y'all. So now your friends getting caught up. You wondering why they going to jail on accident. Like, no, you said it in the rhyme. Now they didn't pick you up, but you've been saying it. And now they know who the 44th Street people are now. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to watch it. We just got to watch it. No, nah, you absolutely up. right. You absolutely right. You, you Question for you. You speak on how prolific and how cold Ali is as as a lyricist. Why why did he first start out kind of on the business side? Why why not you know start out and make a group around himself or try to go solo? Because he, he was originally in nah, the group. He was he was no nah, he was a solo artist. He was an artist too, uh, but he managed us too. You know what I'm saying? He didn't get in. The, he got in the group in like '96 when. Our partner, who was Nangoldi, who was in the group, he left to the other side of town and started using drugs. And now he's um, deceased over that stuff. But Ali came in the group then. He left. He he said, I'm going to step down as manager. I'm going to be the fifth member. Oh, got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, because, you know, obviously you think highly of him, as you should. I mean, the, the, the boy got words. But I always looked at him, you know, as, as the business mind. So it's it's interesting that he he I didn't what I didn't know is that he was a solo artist at the same time he was managing the group. Yeah, he started out when he was getting all the stuff together. We was doing we was trying to find it all. Like I said, the other label was Bulletproof Records. Shout out to them, I love them. They had like two groups. They had three solo artists a singer, two producers. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's how that's how Ali and Love and, and Keith was thinking. They was thinking like, man, we got Ali, we got a group. Shoot, somebody else gonna come, if this gonna lead to another person rapping, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna lead to more so we can have a whole camp of stuff. It was definitely thinking Wu-Tang and thinking, you know what I'm saying, in that nature, because they was big Wu fans. And mm -hmm. Puff and, and Biggie and kind of how, uh, Dungeon Family did it. You see how Dungeon Family had so many groups in one, but it was still Dungeon Family. He was trying to do that more so, you know what I'm saying? And out of that, he ended up having to be in the group, which made sense too, though, because he was so us. It was all so part of it. It was just right. But he was def definitely leading us. I can't, I don't want nobody to, to not know that. You know what I'm saying? You got to know that. Like, he was leading. He was literally, a lot of times, you just got to be around and be in to soak it up. You know what I'm saying? But he was a thinker and he was, and he knew them records, man. Had a basement. His daddy had a basement full of records. He knew what the sample. He just knew. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he'd been here before. And it was just, I'm, that's why I talk highly of him because I'm thankful because I could have been something else. And I'm I'm glad I'm what I am. Yeah, and I probably yeah. wouldn't even steer that direction if it wasn't for him. You know what I'm saying? He made it all feel like there's another level to this. We can get paid from this, y'all not just rapping in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like we can, we cool with selling out the trunk. That's dope. That's the biggest thing ever. You can make a lot of money, but he saw the next level. Like, nah, we can be on, on. You know what I'm saying? Which that's I dope gotta for somebody to, to, to believe. Um, because that's half, you know, I don't need to tell you, but half of uh, the reason that people don't succeed they don't they don't even believe they don't believe that it could happen to them. So when you got somebody who got the vision, they got the talent, but more than anything, they believe that this thing can happen for us. Because at that time, y'all, y'all, what were you, 
y'all was really like the first to kind of blow out of the Midwest. I mean, you had a couple of others at that time, but y'all would really came in and did your thing on a high level from the Midwest when the Midwest was was definitely trailing behind the South, New York, East Coast, and the West Coast. If my memory serves me correct. I just want to, I don't, you know, I'm the numbers get me so, but I, I just want to, I would like to talk bigger because they leave us out of hip hop. You feel what I'm saying? So let me, let me state the fact that, no, we were the biggest in America. We were the biggest in the world. Right now, Nelly probably is top three, top five American artists to be able to go overseas and will sell out more than any of these artists out here to this day. You know what I'm saying? So we got to realize that part, like we was big, we was from St. Louis and we was the biggest in St. Louis, but we was the biggest in the world, Craig. You know what I'm saying? Like literally, like it wasn't no, oh, they, they man, y'all was probably the first biggest thing. And no, it, they had Twisted Do It Died, Bone Thugs and Harmony. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff came from Midwest. Eminem, Kanye West, it's so much. We came out a little bit before both of them a little bit, but. Right. It Correct. still, it still was like, it still, Mid Midwest was heavy. You know what I'm saying? You had, from Bone Thugs and Harmony is the biggest group on, known to man. You know what I'm saying? Just point blank period, we can shut it down from there. You know? Like, nobody done what they done, number wise. No, no group, not group. Outcast may have caught up after West Collar, but group wise, and it's only because Fuji's didn't do more than one. one. You know what I'm saying? Fuji's would have right. did more albums than maybe so, because Fuji sold too many albums on that jump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but Bone Thugs is one of the top groups ever. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they from Midwest. You had Twister, Do or Die. And it was a lot from Chicago going on, uh, especially production-wise and things of that nature, singing-wise. R. Kelly was huge. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a lot going on in the Midwest. Michael Jackson's from Indiana, bro. You know what I'm saying? We, we got it. We there. Like, the Midwest always been there. But hip hop wise, South was killing it so much that when we came out with country grammar, that's all they was thinking that Midwest was Southern. You know what I'm saying? So we got it off. We 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 got the Midwest because they never really had as much at the time. And then, but we also got the South because they loved our country grammar. You know what I'm saying? And then we got the East Coast because we was probably the first group that didn't cater to New York. And Man. New York fell in love. They fell in love with it. And it just it was something that New York had against the South so bad that that they took us in. And as you know, the South just flooded. Everybody got songs on the radio now. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they weren't playing. It was us and then they start playing juvenile. You know what I'm saying? But Juvie and it was out before us, but New York still was hating on it. Still was hating on it. Still didn't want to play it on the radio like they needed to. They just didn't understand how. It was so big, you know what I'm saying, Pause. Like, how how in the world did these guys with all gold teeth do this bling bling? And then how are they talking and how are they doing that? You know what I'm saying? We can't play that. That's it's not New York. You know what I'm saying? I watched them hate on on them. You know what I'm saying? How they come up here and get the biggest deal out like of all these New York rappers here, and and we ain't get that deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's it's it was deep at the time, but we the biggest walking. You know what I'm saying? Like literally, and then we get X'd out of all the hip hop shows, all the stuff on Netflix. Anytime it's a documentary about hip hop, they leave bro out. They leave the ticks out. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's and that's silly when we are the numbers. We are the totem pole of where it should go. Anything, if you want to talk about the beginning of everything, fashion, anything, the every melody that you're hearing now is started with us. Like that's us. That ain't that ain't new. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you think T Pain and them got it? Wasn't nobody rapping and singing like that since Bone. You know what I'm saying? And then we weren't rapping and singing. We were just a melodic rap. So right. if you put bars with a melodic rap, oh, you really killing them. And now they just killing them with mel melodic. They ain't even got to put bars in there no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was making sure we said something. So now when you hear it in 23, it sound like something still. The reason why you're not going to hear everybody else every year no more because it was just melodic. It wasn't bars. It wasn't something something with meat in it. You know what I'm saying? Some it had no uh, in the in the in the in it to last long longevity. So we might be the ones, man. And I and we get left out of all that. So 
I don't believe in the biggest in Midwest, biggest in St. Louis. I know we was the biggest in the world, Craig, for a damn near three years straight. You know what I'm saying? Everybody took our shit. Everybody. Ja Rule, 50 Cent. Everybody followed that melodic hook with the catchy. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had to. They had to. They just put a little gangster with it. Tried to make it a little more gangster than, than what we was talking about. Because, we, like I told you, we, we in sync. <laughs> we we was on we boys the men we was something different like we was we was on a whole different type of tours than everybody else was on our our front row was girls everybody else wanted them hard legs and how every how they poor shows went that's on y'all we knew what we was doing we knew to stay in our lane and do what we doing I ain't got to punch you in the eye nothing I can do just this and I'm fine with it but it leads us out of those conversations because me, those conversations are ran by men. Those documentaries are made by men of hip hop. So they got they say on what they think. And it got to be hard for, for, for it to be. It got to be hard. It can't just be a classic because Country Grammar is a classic. Free City is a classic. But it got to be hard. You got to do something. You got to kill a rapper or something. You ain't talk about us or nothing. You ain't do nothing. They want it. They want it a certain way. And ours was catered more to women friendly and um, dudes who ain't, ain't got to try to be hard all day. Or dudes who actually get some pussy. <laughs> Yo, I'm I'm gonna I'm keep it so real, and I and I love that you um corrected me because it's rightfully so. Y- y- y'all wasn't just the biggest in the Midwest, um, coming out of the Midwest, and you corrected me on a couple of things that I want to touch on. You know, I, I forget, and this is Sean. I forget to give groups like um, Bone Thug and Harmony. They're just do. You you almost forget how, just how dope and 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 how many records and how impactful that group was on hip hop, and and it is greater than hip hop culture, just 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 mainstream culture as a whole. And then when y'all touch down, you're right. As you was talking, I'm trying to think who who was bigger than. Nelly, the lunatics from what would you say, 01, 03, somewhere for, for them three years in there? I, I don't know that it was a group bigger. You know, <laughs> even, even when that first album dropped, I don't know one person, one hip hop artist, well, 50 Cent did it, came it out was, and saw the dominant album. 50 Cent was all three with me. We was already three years. Killing it. That's what. That's what I'm saying. Like we was in there, and the people that was hanging in there, that was like it was. I watched everybody who went from here to there. The people that was hanging, it was M, Pimp, Juice, and J. That's what it was. It was Jay Z, Eminem, and Nelly. And then group wise, it was Lunatics, Locks, um, Dipset was popping, Hot Boys. You feel what I'm saying? Like all these groups were legendary right in this little minute of three, four years, like before everybody broke up. You know what I'm saying? Like right before the breakups, all them boys was on fire, fire. And when nothing, everybody wanted to be ticks. You saw the videos. We ain't can't play. I'm, I'm tired of playing with it. You saw the videos. You know what it is. Everybody looked like uh, we used to go to the red carpets and the whole red carpet looked like ticks when you said and done. We just so happen to stand out even more because we start making our own clothes. We start, instead of you wearing your New York Knicks jersey, how everybody wearing jerseys and throwbacks and stuff like that, we yeah. just literally, we just literally start, we literally start making our own. That must start saying knowledge, wisdom, understanding, five percenters. It starts saying, you know what I'm saying? I start naming my high school, Matthew Dick. I start naming boys clubs in St. Louis. I start saying you city on her, on my jersey, custom jersey with my name on it, my name on the back. You feel what I'm saying? Like I ain't wear nobody, unless you had the same last name as me or a name like Lee or Murphy, that's when I wore your jersey. Other than that, we had custom, we had custom Gucci, jerseys bro we was doing man wasn't nobody doing what we was doing we we did that we started that and then she told my fabulous was wearing jerseys <laughs> she said i'm like what what do you think fab i'm telling you we was there bro we started this fab came after us everybody came after us like stop playing out here we was the one and we started in champs we started cutting off like i'm doing right now we started cutting off sleeves and things of that nature at the beginning we weren't even wearing no expensive clothes 
Then we went into the boom, boom on y'all. Man, stop playing with the big clothes, making it like, man, stop, stop. We, we're the reason. We're sorry. We apologize to all the fat people and bigger people in the world who we was wearing your four X's and your, we sorry. <laughs> we, we, we know that stuff was sold out because our dumb ass done started this trend. And the whole world got on these big old t-shirts and jeans. <laughs> and I ain't saying, and to be honest with you, most of our swag we got from New York. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna take that from nobody. Like we was around certain people who was fashioned up and we knew what to do. You know what I'm saying? Somebody moved to the loop, RP Trail. Trail is the one who got us our deal. He the one who passed us to Cool to Love. You know what I'm saying? Passed our CD in a part in Jermaine Dupri party, got it to Mason Cuda in order for us to even get a deal shout out to him he literally had a store in st louis and he used to grab the clothes from from 125th street <laughs> and bring them back to the loo and sell them in the loo because that's what we was looking like that's what we got out. we got our stuff from harlem everything from beyond them so i can't i don't and that's from just 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 dressing y'all had the nba store you know what i'm saying so that's how we knew oh. about the jerseys but nobody nobody couldn't afford that y'all couldn't afford that stuff nobody could go in the nba store and just buy that stuff like that so i promise you we took it to another level that was us and it's just i don't and i don't want to take props for other people's clothes so i don't like that i don't like bragging saying we did we just, i don't like the soldier boy syndrome of that but we get put out of stuff so much that i have to remind folks like no, that wasn't a everybody look. Like, don't say that. Don't say everybody was doing it. That was a tick look. And everybody was doing it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. It's okay to say it was a tick thing. Yeah, them ticks, them boys was bright. And yeah, we did start wearing colors after that. I came front. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop. Because y'all drove. Y'all drove Mason Puff for the shiny suits and the colors and stuff. So they stopped no wearing question. them. So what you see Rockefeller in? Jeans and a t-shirt, flat out for a whole three or four years, flat, black and white, do rag with the black and white, black under the thing. That's all he wore. That's all what 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 cash money wore. Reads and tees. That's all they can do. That was reading tea. Then what you see everything after franchise boys, all this stuff. Everybody was in white tees and drug dealer clothes to not be what's called. Who had on the clothes? It was the ticks who had on the clothes afterwards. The whole industry, the whole, all the actors, porn stars, everybody started look, trying to look like us, bro. Like, stop playing. Like, the two chains, the, not two chains, the rapper, but to put on two chains and boom, one bigger than longer. That's all. Any swag from, oh, from 99 to 2005 was tickish. <laughs> Even if you created it on your own afterwards, if you look at everybody line who came out, Rock Rock Aware, uh, Puff Jumps, look at it. It all tried to mock vocab. Everything. They couldn't help it. It was the same people making the clothes as Kanye. The same people make it behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? So when they repeating that, you repeating our stuff. You repeating our brands. You doing all that. Of course, it's going to look like y'all trended something. It, it, but you wasn't. I don't know how we got here. Sorry. I, no, I'm glad we did. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You, you, nigga, talk that talk. Like, like I'm sitting over here like, yo, you know, because me and you had a whole conversation earlier about choosing your words wisely and, and no, own it. And, and, and I'm happy that you're saying what you're saying because it's so real. Because even as you're talking, I'm going through my head. Now, I'm from NY. And I know a lot of what we was doing, we was doing. I can't, like, like oversized clothes, this, that, and the third. That's y'all. That's us. But yeah, I didn't get word the world. That, that's the difference. Buster Rhymes had dreads. Uh, Foo Snickers, all time. I can name a million rappers had dreads. <laughs> Yes, but you you made go to the pros. You who made people in Alabama get them? Who made people in in um Chicago get them? They ain't never wore no dread. These things was considered dirty, dusty, Jamaican. They didn't want to wear this. You understand what I'm saying? Like we, this is now look at everything. You can't even find nobody without it. You know what I'm saying? You either got this or a bald head, and that's what it is. I'm I'm done with it. I'll be like, I'll just say, I like, yeah. Some people you can start something, but what trends it? Where the trend setting part of it come in? Because I know I got some of my swag from New York. New York is the swag. What else we see? When I turn on my TV, what do we see? And why? New York. What do you, on movies, anything, We everything was New York. So when we got to New York, 
When I look in them stores, oh, I know what to do. This is how it's supposed to be. This is where it said the world don't even know this is going on over here. They don't know about 125th Street like that. You know what I'm saying? And we can know about it, but we're not going to mock it. You feel what I'm saying? We're not going to even use it. We're not going to even wear it. They not wearing it. They weren't wearing no big jeans. They looked at us crazy to wear Timberlands in the summertime in St. Louis. Like, what do you got on? And not look. That's everybody. an NY thing. The, yeah, them Tim, NY them thing. I've been wearing them since I was a little boy. But but I got to ask you though, Murph, real talk. We 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 celebrating the 50th year of hip hop right now. Sure. Right this second. You spoke about a lot of the lists that come out that the ticks ain't on. What do you think or why do you think it is that you guys don't get the full credit that you deserve. Because, because even the more- put us on the pop list. We ended up being popular. We we got put on the pop list, kid. You know what I'm saying? When you get too many number ones, you on the pop list. I can't even put you over here. You don't see Puff on none of them lists. And Puff probably got the greatest hits of all time. You don't see JD on none of them lists. Rapping wise or no song wise, you know what I'm saying? But they got the biggest hits of all time. It's like, why you ain't got them on there? It's because, they on that pop list, bro. You know what I'm saying? You don't put Pharrell on there. Pharrell got more hits than all of y'all. You don't put him on there, though. Why he ain't on your list? And he be rap, I'll rap in half of y'all. But you're not going to put him on there because he on that pop list. And certain people can go certain places. You know what I'm saying? Nelly going to be doing first forever, bro. <laughs> it, yeah. it is what it is. And even 50 Cent don't be making half of them lists. Why? He on that pop list. They don't even they don't even consider them over there. Like they only they they try to belittle everything my man did in them hip hop. And that man then outdid all y'all with one or two albums. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't belittle that. You know what I'm saying? So people, like I said, men, it's certain men at certain ages are in charge of certain lists. And that's why you seeing what you're seeing. And that and that's how they felt. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it wasn't considered that. We can I I know, I know when you consider me. This or that, you know what I'm saying? That's why they always like you. Know, we want to get rap out the group. <laughs> I be bugging up when they say that. I'm like, oh, you didn't even hear us. You couldn't have heard us. You just was so on that we was on that pop list that you never took the time out to be like, damn, he said that. I dare you break down a tick record. I dare anybody just scientifically break down. I'm gonna do it one day just for you two. I'm gonna break it down word for word what Kiwan said, and y'all gonna be like. Damn, I ain't know homie be gone. Because <laughs> yeah. it's what you want to hear. We 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 hear what we want to hear, bro, when it's not us. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, we got put on that pop side very early. I ain't know. After Ride With Me, it was a wrap. We didn't see, I didn't see black people no more. You know, it's 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 interesting because you, you, you're talking about the dangers of, of Uber success. Not just having a record that, um, you know, rings out in your hood, rings out in your yeah. city. You talking about, and, <laughs> and here's the crazy thing, because this is what everybody aspires. When, 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 when you when you sitting in your crib before the world know your name, before anybody knows one record you ever made, you dreaming of traveling the globe. You dreaming of going pop for lack of a better way to put it but there's a downside to that the, the, the flip side to selling them 10 million records the flip side of being able to travel and do arenas and 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 now you're not just performing with fellow hip hoppers you literally going on stage <laughs> with pop stars and and you're the only rap act in the group the flip side is you will damn near be written out of history and, and, and your relevance and, and the mark that you made in the game will be minimized to where people almost don't even think of you and your contributions when they're putting together their top list. It's crazy. That that big. That's how big, that's how big it is. It's so big that you that you lost your people. Cause it's 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 got to be a black thing, you know what I'm saying? Like you lose your people. I, I I seen it clearly, you know what I'm saying? I know, and they still love you, but you lose them because you don't you don't you're not in front of them every day. And what it costs to to hire you will never put you in front of them. 
You know what I'm saying? That's what that's the part you lose. And it's not a loss. It's your lane. It is what it is. Like, can't nobody, don't nobody stop. No, don't, don't nobody wake up. I don't never wake up and be like asking my neighbor where he going. You know what I'm saying? Like, like where your job at? Like, <laughs> it's where his lane is. And when he get out of work, we can talk at the mailbox. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? But it's it's a separation, it's a pure separation that they would love to have on earth, you know what I'm saying? To to separate you like that. But we take nah, it as whatever, man. We don't even actually we don't we never trip off of it. And that's the Ali thing. Ali loved that type of stuff. Like, hold on, you I you ain't finna just rewrite my soft. You ain't rewriting nothing we did. Stop playing. That's us. That led to us. That's from us. How you go to get to Kanye? You just skipped the whole three years. You went from Eminem to Kanye on our ass so fast on one of them hip hop shows. We was like, what? You just skipped the whole <laughs> As if we didn't do that. We ran all of that, bro. Everything looked like us after that. Every video, how everybody came out. Like it was the biggest um thing to do. Like, cause we was getting the girls. The girl said you gotta have dreads. The girl said you gotta have a bald head, be tall to this boom. The girl said you gotta have this. The girl said you need to wear this. And everything that that described was us. It was one of the ticks. So it's like to get to get written out of it is hilarious. So I ain't worried about it, man. But it's it's there. I be bugging up when I see it. I def we definitely see it clearly. Nah, you you know even as we talking, I I, I think a flow rider, and and this guy sold so many damn records and has so many monster hits. And you never even hear his name in hip hop conversations ever. And he this started is a- on his He came out like that though. He cool with that. He ain't, he ain't worried about none of that. Like no, he's, he's in a different he, lane. But he'll travel. He'll travel he, he, in fairs, festivals, arenas for the rest of his days. Yeah. And, and and he'll never get mentioned in a hip hop conversation, which is crazy. Okay, um, I told you uh, that there was a couple of parts of, of that Ali conversation that I wanted to discuss. Because um, one, one part- second, one, second, one second, I got it. It's the struggle. Hip hop comes from struggle. If you do not, if you do not have nothing in your archive that that really explains your struggle or if your story didn't come out documentary wise or anything of that nature that really, you're, you, you need a 60 minute, you know what I'm saying? You need a- you need a 30 for 30 because you have to explain your struggle because it looked like we didn't struggle. It looked like we just blew up. It don't look like we from the hood, like we from that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it can't clean cut on you. When it comes clean cut, it's not expected to even last that long too. And it lasted longer than people thought. <laughs> like they still go. That boy still got more. Like, so that's the scary part about that. What is a group behind it? Oh, oh, it's a solo artist too. Like it's a lot going on. And they just couldn't couldn't see that coming from clean cut. Cause we, like you said, we wasn't shooting, cussing, selling a lot of dope. Not as much as we could have been saying. You know what I'm saying? So that I think that's the biggest part. I wanted to say that like it ain't their fault that they don't know or don't care that they them. It's the if it didn't come from the struggle part of it, it's not considered hip hop to them, to those in charge, to those gatekeepers. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, last time we spoke, I told you, you that you got another career in you that you don't, <laughs> like, like you, you, you need to be teaching a class. You need to be doing something because your wisdom and your insight is different and in a way, you are absolutely positively right. Hip hop is about the struggle. That that is that is the, the 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 core foundation of what hip hop was built on. And when you look at an artist, no matter if they started in the struggle, but they reached heights that that most hip hop artists will never even come close to they're they're now in rare air and it looks like they have no care in the world money is not a problem traveling ain't a problem life is good this that and the third 
They have no resemblance to struggle. You're forgotten about. You're written off. You're pop. You're not hip hop. Damn, that's that's powerful what you just said. Wow. Yeah. You need some struggle <laughs> records. Yeah. We got, but, got them all on the back of the album. That's you usually put them struggle records on the number 17. <laughs> 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 so it never be a single so the singles was big you know what i'm saying and like when your single says ride with me and sound like you're having a good time all the time you it's easy to get nothing but the girls and nothing you know what i'm saying and the dudes that like the girls i know where the girls going they going to the to the tick concert you know what i'm saying so i'm going like that's what it is it don't be the fact that and then in the midst of that we represent those people who are chasing them girls so they mm -hmm. become big fans. So our men, our male fans are from being just like us. They're mostly dressed like us. They mostly talk like us, like to get the girls, like to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Hold their struggles in a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you come from, you about that life, we'll whoop your ass, but I'm gonna hold back on this one. Play the bigger man a lot. You know what I'm saying? Those are our fans. They got sense a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's dope. Grown men, grown folks and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I see it clearly. And I understand it. But everybody on that list would say the same thing. And I'm saying, like, y'all left them boys off. Like, they know what it is. Our peers know. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the dope part about it. Like, our biggest fans is some of our peers. They come from, they know what we did. They know what it is. You know what I'm saying? But they don't make the list neither. So they don't care. Ain't nothing too much they can say. They on the list. So <laughs> what you want them to say? You forgot. Then you forgot nearly. They ain't going to say that shit. They don't give. They just thankful that they. That you thought of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so so I gotta ask you a real basic question then. If you had it to do all over, would you change anything? Would you would you would you now that that you a grown man? Um hip hop, hip hop is bigger than it's ever been. It's it's in the history books in a way that it never has been. Would you say, yo, you know what? I get it. We 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 was in rare air. We did we climbed heights that that many artists forget hip hop artists, but artists they've never climbed to these heights. But you know what? I, I would rather be in the history books and be part of them lists when it's all said and done as part of my legacy. W would you change it? No, I know it's cliche to say I wouldn't change nothing, but I wouldn't change nothing. I probably. Only thing I I wanted to do was um I wanted to do more damn that's a big ass bug I wanted to do uh some more philanthropy with from myself though because we did it as a like it all our philanthropy work at the beginning was like kind of through Nelly so it it always was you know what I'm saying like the ending of it was Nelly so it looked like Nelly was doing so much you know what I'm saying and he was don't get it twisted that ain't what I'm saying. I just wish I would have did more philanthropy work with my own name at the time. I'm talking about when we were just on fire, like when we was doing all the stuff. We kind of did it together, and but it all came from one source. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we never, it never, it never came off like it was supposed to. But that's, you don't need to be famous to do that work. So that's what I'm learning now. Like you don't have to be on fire to do great work for the neighborhoods, for the for the community. So that's what I'm on now. I'm not just on my philanthropy life. And I think um, that's the only thing I would have changed was I would have started my own foundation too. We can have four or five, all of us need foundations anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like I should have did that at that time. And I was doing, I did work on the side as Murph, but I didn't do my own that part. That's, that shit lasts forever. That go on to your kids. You know what I'm saying? That lasts forever. So that's the only thing I regret. Not regret. That's the only thing I would have changed. I mean, other than that, I don't. We did, we did, bro. That shit was fun as hell. Mm, mm, well said. Um, again, I'm, 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 I'm going back to this Ali conversation because it, 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 it struck a chord in me. Um, and it really, as a fan of hip hop, you know, it, 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 I don't know. It just made me feel sad to hear Ali knowing that he was the architect. Um talking i don't know if him and nelly got a relationship to this day he mentioned things like uh you know nelly still owing money to this day he mentioned things like you know at one point 
he hooked Nelly up with his management and Nelly blocked him from getting 5% of the deal. Why is it? I guess I'll make it a broader question. Why is it that when, when, when people start together as brothers and, 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 and you come out as a group, as one unit, why is it that you just can't stay together and keep that love after the success? Everybody can eat. It's enough money to go all the way around. Why do we continue to hear stories like that, especially when a person like Ali was, was such an integral part in making this whole thing happen from the very beginning? Mm, I don't know. That's something you got to ask Ali. On that one, um, I do. I, I guess I'm asking general because we mentioned groups. Yeah, like, no, I'm talking about, that's why I'm. That's why I'm about to get on. I'm about to answer okay. like, why? Why do groups, black people, like, why do we? I think this is our first. I figured this out a while back. This is our first time seeing money. Not me personally. Not not us, but black people seeing this type of money before without being somebody who owned those buildings over there, the black man that owns, you know what I'm saying? Or he was a lawyer, big lawyer, doctor dude, and he got the bread. You feel what I'm saying? Entertainment just start coming back to the hood like it is. So 90s, you start getting, cause like Jordan and them weren't getting paid like that. You know what I'm saying? Actually it was a lot of money for then, but it, they wasn't really getting paid like that. So the millionaires really started like 98, 2000, them young boys, them NBA players and all that stuff, everybody start getting some real bread. And we start seeing real money outside of the drug dealers. You feel what I'm saying? So this is the first set, first generation of millionaires that don't know what they are doing. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know nothing yet. 2010, we caught on a little more on the business side, like, oh, this is how you're supposed to do with your money. Start seeing Nas is, and everybody come out, oh, he made 50 million off four, four million. You know what I'm saying? You start seeing that more. And and all he all of them put in the Bitcoin. Oh no, they blew up in 2016. We didn't know what to do with our money. All we had was a couple old white men come to us and say, This is what you should do, and they look scary. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not letting you touch my money, or I'm scared to put that in there, or I'm going to make so much money that this little money I got right now don't matter. I don't hear you, old oh, man. I'm going to spend this on this car. You know what I'm saying? Like, So it's the first generation of, of loot. And now we starting to get sense with the loot. So now money is nothing now. Now we realize that being rich ain't nothing. So now you was hearing millionaire, millionaire, millionaire. And now what you hearing? Billionaire, 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 hey, billionaire. Bro. We thinking bigger, right? Yep. We can see the future. We see it like, oh, it's going to be a gang of billionaires soon. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if 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 a basketball player played for four years, he he didn't he hit a billion. They getting 250 for five. That man played for 20 years. The next dude played for 20 years will be a billionaire. Will be a the billionaire. Of them, but the next one gonna be that because they giving them that much money. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so we just not seeing this, and the people under them gonna be millionaires now. So if they making 250. The people under them gonna be somebody gonna be a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Like out of their kids, family members, somebody gonna be making millions. Gonna keep leading to all oh, money ain't nothing. Oh, it's easy to make a million. Oh, I see it clearly. Oh, 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 I just need to uh, flip, flip it like this. So now it's just gonna be that. So that's what you're seeing. You're just seeing new money, and new and money causes problems, and it don't even have to be the cash value that I owe you or nothing like that. It's just the power that comes with money and the things of that nature will break up people, break up groups. Uh, a lot of times when you see millionaires, billionaires, it's not a group of billionaires. It's not a group of millionaires. You feel what I'm saying? You see one, it's going to be a millionaire and some people around it. You feel what I'm saying? So now you got millionaires need to hang with millionaire and you got billionaires hanging with billionaires. So it's not a lot. You feel what I'm saying? So you getting that. That's all you getting power structure. That's going to always fall off. You know what I'm saying? NBA and all them people go off cool because they're individual sports. So they got to worry about nobody but their contract and this and that. You know what I'm saying? When you're in a group or you're in the rap business, music business, it's always more to it. You know what I'm saying? And that money leads to certain things. But I, 
me personally, with our group, I don't blame no money because ain't no money that could that could break that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't ain't no amount, and ain't nobody stealing like that to be able to break that. You know what I'm saying? So people get mad, man. Everybody, I know, I'm I hang with more friends than family members. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't a, it ain't that. It's people break away. People. That's why I'm just looking at all the groups and all the people in, in business, period. Like, people grow apart. It just got to be that. That's what it must be. It's no difference from you having a kid and your kid getting their own family. Go live at their house and he can barely call you now. And <laughs> they got his own family now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the same thing. Look, everybody got their own households, own families. It's kind of hard for groups. I know it is. You know, me and us, I don't think it's hard for us, but I, I see how it can be hard for groups, especially put together groups. Cause you know, um, cause you got different stuff going on. Everybody got different aspirations and different dreams. You change every five, six, seven years. You're not the same person you was when you was 21. You know what I'm saying? Like, so different stuff irritates you or different stuff this. So people look at stuff different. It's a lot to that. It's a lot to why why groups don't. I I went back to the temps and everybody to see what what's the real science behind that. And it's it's it starts with money and power. But I think the respect comes in play at some point. So it's always money, power, respect when we're dealing with business and money, right? So I think power, I think money and power always shown itself, but now we're seeing people lose respect for each other for doing stuff that they don't approve of. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you you broke it down well. Um, and I understand every word you're saying. I get it. Every five, six, seven years, we as human beings, we change. Um, you know, coming up on the block, whether you got rich or not, you, you, you could have been super tight with dudes on the block. But if you go and move or, or go to college or whatever, you get a new set of friends and you don't have the time, not necessarily that you don't want to, but you don't have the time to chill with the dudes who you spent every waking moment. You go to school. Now you got a different set of friends. You get into the workforce. OK, the dudes you was hanging out with in school, maybe y'all ain't as tight as you once was. I, I respect that. I, I, I think what, what bothered me, Sean, the most, and you can't speak on this, I get it. This would have to be a conversation I have with Ali himself. Uh, you know, it almost, it almost felt as though he felt, Ali himself felt as though his opportunities to make money was being blocked by somebody who he helped become a multimillionaire. And that part, I don't really understand. I don't, but, um, you know, I, I get it. it. It it just is what it is. You know, switch topics with me for a second. Uh, you know, at one point, it just felt like you was the feature king. You was on so many songs, back to back to back. Um, you know, you, you was on the Welcome to Atlanta remix. Um, Puff had the, you on the, the Shake Your Tail Feather joint. Um, I, could, I could keep naming them. And, and, and rattling them off one after the other. Was, was that a, a, a strategic plan on your part, setting up your solo album? Or was it just, yo, people was calling because you was just that hot at the time? Nah, somewhere, somewhere around the Tick album, or after Batter Up on Country Gram, I just started doing a lot of features. Um, and I wasn't saying no to none of them. Like, I was taking all the tools and fuse. I was, I was getting on, you know, most of the my peers' albums and stuff like that. So I just never said no. Um, I like rapping, man. I think some people don't like it. I think some people do it as a gig, you know what I'm saying? I really, really like the studio part of it, the creation part of it. So I just never said no, man. And plus, some of them beats, I was probably would end up jacking them in the future anyway, just to freestyle on it anyway, you know what I'm saying? So it was perfect timing. It's a lot of remixes, uh, so it was it was dope. It was dope. I think that was like the end of the remix era. Correct. Yeah, yeah, because it, it it felt like it felt like every time you turned on the radio, Murph was on another record. But 
I understand you didn't say no and I get it and I respect it. And you was out there. You love what you're doing. You're getting your money. But it's almost like outside of Nelly, you really got singled out of the group. Like, like it, 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 it was, if we need somebody um, who spit, if we need somebody, you know, with that new, that, that, that Midwest swag about them, we got to get Murph on, 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 on this remix. So it, it, it definitely, I get that you wasn't saying no, but you was getting the calls. And, I, and it definitely felt like you were singled out. Yeah, that was it was some calls coming. Um, I'm pretty good, Press. I ain't that bad. <laughs> I gotta agree with you on that one, kid. Yeah. I, I I I can't I can rap. I can't say that if I do so my say so myself, I can pretty much uh yeah, I can rap. So I think that was part of the phone calls. And I was just appreciative of it. You know what I'm saying? That they actually heard a little dude from St. Louis. Nah, I mean, okay, every every artist dreams. And maybe you this wasn't your dream because the last time I talked to you, you was like your prayers. You know what? I always saw myself as part of the group. But the average rapper dreams of having their solo project, putting out their album. You finally got an opportunity coming off of massive success to put out your album album goes gold you know was was that a dream come true for you and 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 why did it take so long for the second one to come out because that album did well and it had joints on it uh, i don't know about dream come true i can't say that one i can definitely say um I had fun recording that album and I definitely uh, was on purpose, you know, creating that mug. Like, I, if I'd have known I would have took off, like, if I'd have known that classic albums used to be like 10 to 12 records, you know what I'm saying? I ain't think about it like that because I got like 17, 18 joints on that thing. Mm -hmm. I think I should have, uh, I would have cut four or five records off to make it complete, like make it that exact so people really can hear me. Um, but I was so excited about being able to put, you know, my people on records and had about three or four tick records on that thing. I had a lot of features from St. Louis, you know what I'm saying? My wife, Seven Lee was on that thing. Um, uh, King Jacob and Prince Church, you know what I'm saying? That was like a, a little side group I had that was my cats from high school. We was called the Young Dudes. I got them on a couple of tracks. It was just dope. And then the producers, I was messing with new producers, uh, like Wally. And um, Coco, who made Tail Feather, you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was, it felt like I was putting something on. Cause like on the end of Ali album, um, Ali came out with a solo album called Heavy Starch. And the end of his album, he had like 20 St. Louis artists on, on one song. It was like, Man. it was, it's the dopest thing ever. And he was just, you know, he, uh, that's why I don't hear people when they talk about him putting on, like, that's what he do. Like that, that was the perfect example of him doing that. And uh, so when I was doing my album, that's all I was thinking about was like, who coming up with me? Who riding my butt? You know what I'm saying? So I was putting them people in play. That's all I really was, really was on, putting them in play and trying to see when we doing the next tick album, like trying to make sure it leads to everything. Like I, I wish I would have got to a tick single because I, I I got a couple on there that's tick records that it would have, that would have been dope to do. And it would have led to a tick album. So when we was doing our solo album, we was always thinking, maybe my third single will lead to what's next. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was a solo artist, I feature him on there or whether it was um, the group album that we wanted to come with. So we didn't get that far on there because they kind of shut that album down. We dropped, they dropped them. Like I said, remember I told you about them dropping Nelly albums right after our, every time we dropped the album, they had dropped a Nelly project two months later and they was just doing it purposely trying to create, keep that buzz thinking it's, and they overshadow some stuff sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because they'd be like, Murphy Law posters would be popping that summer, but once these, once two months after your album, month after your album come out, they move on to the next project, and now we, it's whole different posters. Like, no, nah, these events, I for about a year now, I need to be working on this, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't, they ain't on it. They, that's, labels wasn't on it. Back then, it was a big number one, 
if you didn't do a certain thing in your first week, I don't, I'm not going to put my money in that second, third, fourth week like that. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure you do num back then when the label was going, you make sure you do great numbers on the come out. That way they can flush money into your, the next thing going, you know? So I understood it. It was super dope. And that's what led to my second album that didn't come out because it was, it was, they waiting on a certain buzz type of thing. I don't know what the hell they were waiting on for real, but they was just waiting, a whole lot of waiting, restaurant waiting on, because the album been done. And it had some great, great songs, great songs. Like second album might be, that was my class. That was going to be my class. It was, it was like that. Oh, had, dang. so hold on. So, so you actually had you, I'm, I'm sorry, you actually had your second album in the can waiting? They no, they had it. Yeah, it was. It was. They had it so long that I end up making more songs and adding them every year. I was adding another. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, y'all ain't putting it out still. Like, I can't stop creating. You know what I'm saying? So, I was swapping out shit and all type of stuff. But I had some big records because we knew how to make big records now. You know what I'm saying? Murph, Murph had a bluesy, um, laid back first album, but my second album had some dope concept big records, big hooks. It was real big, Ooh. tail feather scale, you know what I'm saying? And I, yeah, they 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 missed that ball. They had a lot of, they, they ended up signing a lot of artists at that time too. They ended up um, getting all the hot stuff was coming through their thing because they collabed with Motown, they collabed with Def Jam. So all of that was really under Universal Umbrella at the time. So they just had a lot going on. And at the time it was like, it was just a lie. I got lost in the sauce, man. You got to speak up, speak for yourself. You got to represent yourself very well to uh, make sure you stay in business wise. Fan wise, I still was, I had mixtapes out. I had all type of stuff was going on. I was still on the radio. So fan wise, I was great. Each doing shows the whole nine, but business wise and label wise, I was lost in the sauce. You know, that, that's the part of the game that so many people don't realize, what you spoke about right there. A lot of times, it, it has nothing to do with you as an artist. It has nothing to do with uh, how many records you sold, because you legitimately sold a gold record that is, you know, people people hear gold and they think 500,000 units. Yes, that is the benchmark you have to cross to have a gold album, but yours is typically really close to the platinum, which is a million units sold. And that's back in the days when it was real units. People had to go to the store and pick up physical copies. It wasn't just streaming a single here, streaming a single there. So from the outside looking in, a lot of fans don't realize, you know, sometimes your fate, it's not even in your hands. You know, to, to, to your point, Universal uh, bought on, they they merged with a couple of other labels. And now you, if you had five artists on, on Universal proper, now you got 15 artists. And, and, and we got to figure out who do we move with? Who do we roll out with? So it's, it's kind of messed up that somewhere in that, you know, your, your independent project, I mean, excuse me, your individual project was lost. But more important, how, how, do, how do you keep such a great spirit about it? Because I'm listening to you and, and it don't sound like you have no bitterness or, 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 or you don't have any uh, disruption in your soul right now. You're able to speak about it. That's what it was. And, and you know, I, 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 I just deal with the hand that was dealt to me. I, that's all you can do. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a present in this world, man. I like to live in the present. I like to, uh, at the time, if that was making me mad, that's when I was complaining and that's when I was mad at it. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't gonna soak on it. I'm an athlete. Um, you can hit one out of four and, and make millions. You know what I'm saying? Like, they batting. <laughs> that boy got the bat, didn't hit none today. He got up the next day, hit one out of four, and he's in the major leagues. You know what I'm saying? So I never look at it. But one thing about baseball teaches you is that um, when you make a mistake or something happens to you, you got to move on to the next place so fast anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I think that being that person, that athlete, 
um, keeps me pushing to the next whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't hold, how long am I going to soak in it? Because in the end of the day, I always feel like it's your your fault. You, I ain't blaming no labels. I'm not going to blame nobody sitting me on no table. Why they sit you? You know what I'm saying? What, what you not doing? What you, what you got going on? What's up? You know what I'm saying? How much noise? How serious are you about it? So it all plays a part. Everybody play a part. It ain't just one person. It ain't just one label. It ain't. It's all a system. And if the system not working for that particular project at the time, it won't come out. It won't hit what it need to hit. You know what I'm saying? They can't do nothing about it because they're dealing with budgets and money and you're not the only artist. You know what I'm saying? So I never knock it. And I'm definitely not finna soak in it or keep, I got to keep it pushing. I got to teach kids to not feel that way or sit in that too. You know what I'm saying? I got children. They got to know not to sit in there for long times and things of that nature, too. So I just keep it pushing, bro. That stuff don't make you or break you. It's, I I know it's part of all the, the journey. The journey is the fun part. So it's all part of the journey. I'm I'm cool with it. That's part of the book. That's dope. That's an interesting part of the book. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. My life like a book. It's a very interesting part there, sir. Let me ask you, real talk, has this always been you or is this just the evolution of Murphy Lee? Is this something you've grown into? Because I know we're talking about music, but what you're speaking about is life. Um, being present, like literally being present in the moment, um, allowing yourself to move on from things. Don't carry it with you. You, you can't do nothing about it. Keep looking forward, um, not soaking in, in what didn't happen, but be happy about the fact that you had the opportunity to go through it in the first place. Is, is this learned behavior for you or, or was you always like this? No, I'm sure it's learned behavior, but mm, I think it's just part of my character, man. I'm playing a role in this world. I'm playing a role in this world, Prez. This is all in my character. You hear me? <laughs> so I got to talk like this at this speed, you know what I mean? To make it seem real and physical. Nah, but um, I don't know. I'm an old head, man. I've been an old head all my damn life. Since I had knowledge of self, that's when it starts. And that's the beginning of everything that opens your brain. Your third eye be wide as that, as that thing, man. That's all. It just opened and hear stuff. Like I said, like when you asked me earlier, it was like, did you just come up with that? Or you been thinking that for a minute? I'm like, uh, I'm sure it's a thought that's probably been there, but I'm just talking from where we talking. We having a conversation, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's just how I feel at the moment. I think that's what up. Tomorrow I might say something different just on the freestyle, but it's all coming from a real ass place and from a real thought and from a goddamn smart human. You ain't coming from no dummy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what I'm talking about. I see it clearly. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely know that, boy, people who live in that past, this world too fake to live in the past. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's if, if life is about evolution and growing and growing, it's no way you can, man, live in those old football dreams. And you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, I used to be, I was the man in high school and... <laughs> And you, and you still trying to be that person? Like, stop it, bro! You just gotta, you gotta live in the moment, live where you at. You know what I'm saying? Because life is dope, and you're gonna miss out on life if you do that. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta see what's in front of you right now and fight it. It's dope. It's whatever it is right now. That's what I'm up against. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like the moment you start being like, man, when I was this way. Only time you think about the past is to, to teach you that lesson. Like, oh, uh, last time I did that, this happened. So I'm not going to do that no more. Or last time I did that, I hit. Let me do that again so I can hit. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing you should be doing with the past. It's mm -hmm. tripping off, tripping off of it, learning from it. The moment you be like, I regret this. Or I should have did this, man. I should have been doing, man. Boy, just if, man, if I'd have made a left, boy, it would have been right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, that's not how, how it will. Or you never, or life would have never sent you left. You know what I'm saying? It's sending wherever. I don't, I don't believe in no spooks or nothing, but it's it's doing what it's doing. It's circling how it's circling. We talking for a reason. It's here leading to this. This interview leads to some other body else who learned something from it or whatever it is. It's every moment in your life is leading to something else real quick. Absolutely. You know? And just keep it at that.
Absolutely. You know, before I let you up out of here, I got a, a couple of questions um, real quick. Nelly, um, do you still hear from him? No, nah, I haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, no, sir. Understood. It, it, it came out, I think, yesterday, um, maybe the day before yesterday. He sold part of his catalog, $50 mm -hmm. million. Dollars. Did you get to read that? Oh, uh, yeah, I heard about it. I've seen people send it to me. I've seen it on my timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 50 mil for 50% of your catalog, that's not a bad deal. It's a great deal. It's that's a great, great deal. deal. I, 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 this ain't nothing about the 50 million. This ain't nothing about Nelly. This is about our, our people. And because I was reading comments and stuff on certain things, on certain, you know, on certain blogs. And the comments where people were saying, stupid, man, I wouldn't sell my mask and this. That's for your family, family. Boy, hey man, all y'all need to cut it out. Like, quit playing in life. You're talking like that because you don't have a catalog. It's easy to talk like that. But if you saw an ASCAP check or if you saw how your publishing checks come in, and they come in, publishing checks come in twice a year, ASCAP checks come in, ASCAP or BMI checks come in maybe nine times out of out of year, nine months out of year. It's three, three months off. And in between oh, those three months, you get sound sound exchange checks. So the sound is changes those three months that come in between those ass gaps. Then you got a pub that comes twice a year now. It used to be four times. Now it's two times a year. You feel what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. now what they're doing is those companies that's buying these catalogs and buying different things, they're adding up how much you're making per year for your thing. You don't have to give away everything. You can give away just your sound exchange or just your ASCAP part of it. And you can just give a percentage of it. You only have to get a whole thing of that up. And you still getting your publishing from the other stuff, still getting royalties from this and that. Sound exchange still coming. And you can sell it. They say he sold 50% of his, of his catalog. That means he still got 50% of it. But we don't know what, it's, it's the music business. So 50% could be of 2%. You feel what I'm saying? He could own 2% of this song. And y'all just split 2%. And they cool with it. And he got 50 million out of it up front. Because we don't know where money going. It will not know where pandemic. After the pandemic, everybody should not, should at least entertain that conversation about your catalog. You don't know where this stuff going to be. Talking about leaving something for your family. Leave the money in. It's going to be way more worth than that. How do you know? Because they're not giving you nothing you're not worth. You feel what I'm saying? Like, if you don't think they did the math on adding that up to see how much I'm going to give you for the next 30 years or whatever your deal is, then you stupid. They know what they're doing. People, it's money. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop talking to that little boy. Talk. I hate that little small talk people be talking. Like, what if somebody gave you 50 mil up front and you were only getting maybe 75,000 a year off of what they're talking about? You know how many 75s you got to get to get to 50 million? <laughs> Why, why I'm finna, I might die tomorrow. Why I'm gonna wait for that? What does it look like waiting for y'all so I can, you can say, leave your catalog? Well, if music stop, ain't no damn catalog no more. Now what? What if they blow it up? What if they use it and make so much money off of it? So what? Why are you worrying about the, what the uh, plug doing? Like, how much did you get out of the deal? That's your, that's what you negotiate. What do you want? So if you want more, get more and don't settle. But, don't think these people stupid when they be getting Lil Wayne 100 million. Man, now, when I'm finna sell it, right now, what happened? I'm finna get 100 million today in my account over me waiting 40, 50, 60 years to even barely see a 100? You ain't gonna see that 100. What am I talking about? Why am I talking to these people? He ain't finna see the 50. So why not get it now? And he still got percent, um, percentage left. That's what it says. You know what I'm saying? I'm going off the timeline too. Yeah, yeah. But like, I just wanted people to realize when Jermaine, when everybody's selling, doing what they doing, like, dog, this is the smartest move they could have done. Y'all ain't thinking about the people who buying it. Y'all ain't say none of them. They doing it just because they buying it like art. They buying it like, I got so much money. My company has so much money that I have to put it somewhere. What's the best way to put it? Because there ain't no more art. Jay-Z bought it all. What else yeah. we going to do? We got, what can we buy? All this buy catalogs, y'all. You know, what Michael Jackson been doing all his life. 
what everybody else who's smart been doing. They've been buying catalogs, like getting firms together and buying catalogs. Lawyers have been doing it forever. People, it's the same thing as a publishing company. Now, people who mad are Universal Publishing, um, Sony Publishing. Um, these publishing companies are pissed because you got an outside source that don't even know nothing about music buying catalogs when they want to buy them. And we say no to them all the time. You always say no to the publishing company because they come with some janky stuff every time. You yep, feel me? Yep. But these companies who just invest in, they're like, shit, I got a billion to spare. Let me buy five catalogs. That's going to be supposedly worth this amount when we go into AI and metaverse and all this stuff in the future. It's going to get played. Don't You best believe they buying it for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Because they know what's next. We didn't know what was next. Streaming came. We didn't know nothing about streaming. We still don't know. They still don't pay people right now. They don't know how to pay us. But what's next? Oh, they heard about it. They know about it. So they're buying up catalogs. You feel what I'm saying? But just because you keep your catalog, though, and this let me mark some Mr. Artists and all you people out there who not selling their catalog, who want to keep their masters that they can't control. You can own your masters all you want, but you don't know what to do with them. It don't matter. That's you don't so know how to lease. You don't know how to lease it. You don't know what the paperwork is to sign it. They do. So they doing that. They OK with leasing out your music and making sure that it gets clear when people drop or sample your stuff in that nature. You don't know what you're doing with your masters. You feel what I'm saying? So you do need a partnership in somebody doing because they can work it for you. Because you just sitting at home with it ain't doing no good. So you can hold it all you want to. But if ain't nobody playing it, it's still zero. You feel what I'm saying? Yep, so when yep. they come in with these people, man, go get your money, man. Get what you can get out these folks. Like, don't hold that back. I don't hate when people do that. All that. Them, them in the same conversations of don't have a job and rap and all that. Like, man, get you a job if you need a job. Man, work. Like, don't make people feel like entrepreneurs versus people who work jobs. Man, go get you a career if you can go get you a career, man. Don't be playing with these people. Entrepreneurs got the hardest time of their life. Everybody can't be entrepreneurs. You Somebody has to work for somebody. So stop it. Like, stop that talk because you're scaring these kids away from doing certain things. Now, we all should be doing entrepreneur stuff, even on the side or whatever you need to do because to, you're going to need more than one stream of money. But don't let people talk you out of that. You know what I'm saying? Signing to labels, selling your masters. Man, dude, you you might die tomorrow, bro. Fuck all that. And you talking about it's for your family. Your family don't even like you half of the time. Like, stop. Like, I ain't saying they don't. They do or don't. I'm just telling you, like, don't don't put that on your shoulders. Like, we we wait, but wait it on us. Like, we got to take care of the whole hood. Black people, we, we wait that on us. All our millionaires. That's on us heavy as black men. We fly. You don't have to take care of nobody but yourself and your kids. You're not obligated to take care of your parents. You're not obligated to take care of nobody but yourself. They, Your parents raised you to be able to take care of yourself. So you can take care of yours, your kids. And it should go on, flow on, and so on. Don't be expecting nobody to be trying to change generations. I'm trying to change generational wealth. All right, well, do it. If you take care of yourself and you take care of yourself and you take care of yourself, everybody take care of themselves. That's generational wealth. Because now we all can put our stuff together in life. But when one person doing it, he can't put that on that man back like that. Leave that people alone. Leave these folks alone. That's why I told you it's our first generation of having money. So we don't know no better. We think it's get the money, go buy your mama a house and call because <laughs> she took care of you. Go do this, go do that. That's what everybody did. Every, I did it. Everybody do it. That's what you think is supposed to be done. But in actuality, if you worked at just General Motors or something, ain't nobody even calling you about no generational wealth. They ain't even talking to you. That's right. <laughs> they ain't That's right. What's your 401k? What's your 401 look like? <laughs> they don't care. But because you're famous and these monies can come across people's timeline, they feel like they can say something about it. But in actuality, bro, go get your bread. You might not see that 50 million. I promise you won't. Out of checks coming that's barely coming every year. You know what I'm saying? One mess up, somebody can come grab that money and take it from you. Somebody can sue you tomorrow and take all of it. Like, don't, 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 don't do not do that. Don't do that. All you artists out there, if these people come in in the correct way, make sure it's correct. And go get your bread if you got to. If it's something, because they got different deals. Five-year deals, 30-year deals, for life deals. Whatever you choose for yourself. But don't be like, man, I want my kids to have my masters. I mean, not even your masters, because these folks ain't even talking about masters. They talking about publishing. All right. You have a percentage of publishing. The producer get 50 off tops. 
So we splitting 50. If you got other people on your song, your shit is here. So we talking about 25% of songs a lot of times these people, these artists be owning. And then the company come in and say, I, I want 50% of that. That's nothing. These people finna give me 50 mil up front for nothing. Okay, stop, so stop, they stop. Got stop they don't care about money. They don't care about 50 million. So they put that, that's like putting 50 million in a IRA or something. That's what they're doing. So it keep gaining. Every year we get $100,000. Until we get our 50 back and it makes profit. We don't care because that 50 was nothing. I just have to put my money up so the government won't take it. I have to put it, invest it. I have to do something with it. So what should I do? Buy a catalog. It's easy money. It's easy to do, but they not going to get their money to 50, 30 years. You feel me? Like, so why not go sell that shit, sell all that shit? I ain't sold my, I still got all mine. I got mine. Everything he sold, I still got my percentages of it. So I'm, I know what, what I still have. But when the time comes, if it, if it come correctly, man, that shit gone. I want mine up front. I don't want to wait on something. Why would you want to do that? Think about it. A bank, if a bank come to you and say, I'm, I'm going to give you, I can give you 50 million up front, or I can give you uh, 50,000 a year for the next 50 years. Exactly. You having money, you might choose the 50,000. No, you wouldn't, fuck that. We choose, get your money, man. Go get the 50. Cause you can do whatever you need to do with that 50, right or wrong. We can do whatever we want to do. All the investments, all the money I want to put up. I can put up a hundred a month for myself. <laughs> pay myself out the hundred, just like they was going, just like ASCAP have been paying me. Why not just pay myself with the 50? If I won't, don't want to be broke in the future. If you want to look at it like that, you feel what I'm saying? Like, don't let people count your bread, man. I don't know why I'm talking so long on that, but that's all I wanted to say. I was just no. like, man, quit letting pe leading people on and they don't know what they be talking about. I posted that today. I said, I said, I said, it's funny how <laughs> how people can be so wrong, like, and just like stand on it. Like. <laughs> like just act like they know what it was acting like you know what you're talking about like you we so boy i said the moment we realize we don't know what we talking about <laughs> it'll be a better nation <laughs> you don't even know what you don't even got no real input on this subject why are you talking i'm so it's just a comment after comment just talking i wouldn't have done none of them i'd have kept my man my grandkids need that yeah they need that 50 now Somebody told me money finna leave. They said it was finna be a new dollar. Why wouldn't I want my 50 dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going by farmland. I'm out this month. I'm finna flip it the whole nine. But why wait on the flip when you can get it up front? We silly. We stupid. We got to wake up, people. And I know it's new to us. And it's only our people. It's new to us. We the only people care about money. Other cultures don't even care about money. We care so much about it. So since we care about it, let's learn it. We're playing with life. We playing because you leading little kids on. You leading people on who read. Don't lead nobody on. You know how a rumor can sound like the truth. If we all just keep saying it and saying it. Yep. And that's what's going on. Like we all agreeing to that. No, stop now, y'all. Stop now. Or we gonna lose. <laughs> we gonna, we gonna lose. <laughs> stop. If y'all want some togetherness, stop that right now. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't say it. I'm not finna be talking about plumbing and all that, and I don't know nothing about them pipes. <laughs> Leave plumbing alone, bro. You don't know nothing about plumbing, but somebody does. Let them have that dope conversation. Let them have it. Have you ever heard engineers have conversations with each other, be talking all that button talk and all that? You got right. the new PS3 look for Let them have that talk. That's to the world. That's a lesson for the world. Yo, you just gave a master's class um, in so many different things, but I'm open because again, like you're talking, you're talking about a catalog, music specifically. But this can be any type of catalog. It could be your art catalog. Um, yeah. It, it could be sneaker catalog, whatever it might be. Who knows what mm -hmm. it is that you're into that you possess um, that's worth a little something. You you broke that thing down so dope, and 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 it's one part. I tried to stop you, but you was you was on such a a a, 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 <laughs> a, a tangent right there. I was like, yo, let him go. But for anybody, especially artists, 
understand when 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 you see if a producer give you a beat off rip, he own fifty percent, you own fifty percent. But there might be other writers involved. You know, maybe you signed to a production company. By the time you done, you might own twenty five percent of that song. So it's not always what you think where you, it's almost never what you think where you own 100% of a catalog. And to your point, we don't know, because I think this might've went over some people's head. You know, we don't know, maybe maybe his his catalog, maybe he got 2%. Maybe, maybe he got- Some of it already and they getting the other half and we just not seeing this. Like, we don't know what the news is. We don't know nothing, bro. You know what right. I'm saying? You, they asked for 50%. What if he had already sold 50 to somebody else a long time ago and only yeah. half it of, of this? And then, like I said, we talking about numbers in, 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 in the music business, bro. 100%, they could be talking about 100% of 1%. There you go. They don't, we don't know that, but the news and the PRs can make it move and groove like it groove. Like I said, people sent it to my DM, like, go get your money, Mark. <laughs> Talking all crazy. I understand it. You know what I'm saying? That's super dope for the lawyers and all that, but man, nah, man. Nah, man. Quick count people bread, bro. Quick, y'all don't know what it is. And then to the artists, go get your go get your money, man. Don't wait on nothing. Don't wait on nothing. Get all the advances that you can get. Don't be like, man, I'm going to get mine. I was smart enough to get mine on the back end. No. Because you don't know what they're going to do. They've been to shelf you and all that. Get your money now. Because that money you ain't got to pay back. You don't owe them nothing after that. They make it seem like you're in the red and all that. But they ain't finna go to court and get you a write-off. It's a wrap. They cool with that you. They just don't want to do no more. They know when to stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> labels know when to stop spending on you. That's all. They they good at that. They not good at they not good at collecting. It's so dope. That's they, so dope. That's so dope. He said they know when to stop spending on you. Damn it. Like, no, nah, cut them off. It's it's done. It's a wrap. Too much. I can't. Oh uh, man, I need it. No, can't do nothing. Ain't no money. Ain't no money there. They know how to stop it. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing people stop spending. So get your money on that beginning end and don't have no regrets about it. Don't care. Get your money, man. Okay. Um, you know, we 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 spoke about family in several different um points of this conversation. How's your brother Kiwan doing? Oh, uh, Kiwan, great, man. He great, he great. He um he want he's still in St. Louis. He um getting it in. We got the you see me clothing. Uh that's that's he been trend setting and that shit i'm watching other t-shirt companies and all type of stuff just steal our little styles and all types of stuff so fast that's how i know key where i've been the trendsetter from the jump so we just we just working on that um trying to bring that into full strain we was moving from marching from merch to to real fashion a little bit you know what i'm saying because it was mm -hmm. coming like everybody had kind of looked at our like our you see me as a label so people was like, if I'm buying that merch from them, I'm kind of like just representing their label. But we turned it into what it need to be turned in so it can actually, you know, be respectable on in the uh, fashion world. So we got some dope stuff coming. It's going to be super dope. Uh, you see me merchandise.com. Uh, yeah, no, you see me. I'm sorry. You see me marketplace.com. You see me marketplace.com. You see M E. You see me marketplace.com. And you see me stands for you can't make excuses. I love that. That's dope. Um, where can people catch up with you and find out all that you're doing and working on today? Oh man, I had a when we just did that last interview, I had my yep. uh my website was acting retarded. I just got it fixed. Um, uh, so it's it's newmurf.com. That'll get you to everything, all my projects and um, the documentaries that I drop. Um, this is my 20 year anniversary for Murphy's Law. So we are doing some big stuff this year. Um, September 23rd, St. Louis. Um, September 16th, we are doing uh, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. And we are setting up a couple more. I think we got Charlotte right there behind that. And we also got uh, Chicago and Indianapolis. So we're gonna do about 10 to, to uh, it's a, uh, <clears throat> It's called the Murphy Lee Experience. It's um it's for my 20 year anniversary. It uh it's comedy, hip hop, R and B, live band, DJs, the whole night. It's a straight show. It's super dope. Uh, hosted by myself and um 
and we do some stuff, man. Murphy with a live band be pretty fun, man. And so, and it's super dope. Um, but yeah, it's the 20 year anniversary for Murphy's Law, man. We made it to 20, man. So we we gonna we gonna celebrate this year. Yo, you gotta celebrate. What a, what a dope milestone, bro. Real talk. What a dope milestone. You make it to New York, you gotta reach out. I, definitely. I'm definitely there. Definitely. Murph, it's always my pleasure, brother. Like th these conversations never go as I plan, but they always are more than I expect. Like I really enjoy sitting and chopping it up with you. I love listening to your perspective. And I told you, you got a you got a whole nother career in you, man. Like real talk. Um I, sure. and, and people really need to sit and listen to your words. And you need to 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 get out there. I know you're doing what you're doing, but um your your mentoring game. Um, your your ability to teach and break things down to 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 such a palatable um, level to where people can digest and hear it in a way that they can receive it, man. You 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 spit second to none. So keep up the great work, my brother. Congratulations on the twenty year anniversary. And until we do it next time, much love and continued success. I uh, appreciate you, Chris. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.